So one of the things you're going to start considering once you're becoming a senior resident is how you want to structure your rounds, whether that be table rounds or card flipping, hallway rounds or true bedside rounds. And that's because a lot of the times the attendings will be kind of letting you choose how you want to structure rounds. And in this video, I kind of want to make a case for why bedside rounds may actually be something you want to consider, even though by far and away card flipping or table rounds are the most popular choice at this point. And there's several reasons why I think bedside side rounds are something you should consider. So first of all, I just want to take a quick look at kind of people's initial reactions to bedside rounds versus table rounds. And you can see on r slash residency, and I think in residency programs in general, bedside rounds are truly, truly unpopular and people do not like them at all. The table rounds all the way, being able to use the computer the whole time is much easier. I'm struggling to follow how table rounds would take longer. You're avoiding the time spent walking between rooms as well as inevitable small talk with patients, which is a very true thing that a lot of people will talk about. This person also prefers table rounds for sure. When I was a med student, I had an attending who preferred presenting right in front of the patient and their family and that shit was hell on earth. I'm just trying to put in orders so we can leave on time, table rounds all the way. So I think I think these comments really bring up a lot of commonly brought up points, which is A, that there is a perceived decrease in efficiency with bedside rounds, and that presenting in front of patients is often uncomfortable and can kind of be not as safe uh, of a learning environment. But I think here, the biggest thing that people are addressing is the time aspect of it, that it feels like bedside rounds take a lot longer. What makes for effective bedside rounds? <laughs> First answer not doing rounds at the bedside. This person says, attendings here do bedside rounds on new patients and table rounds on others. I enjoy bedside rounds with attendings who like to teach and do physical diagnosis as I'm interested in that aspect of medicine. That being said, if there's no teaching or useful physical diagnosis, it can be tedious. I had a patient tell me how awful it made her feel to have our whole team stand around her bed and talk about her drinking habit. I don't blame me, it made me super uncomfortable too. I've had other patients express similar sen sentiments. But I think a lot of this is just perception and also a fact that a lot of time bedside rounds are not done correctly. And if you actually look at the literature and actually look at the evidence behind bedside rounds, the evidence really does show that there is no difference in time between bedside rounds and table rounds. And if anything, there is a time saving aspect in bedside rounds. But again, this is only done if bedside rounds are done correctly. And so there's a lot of caveats you have to be aware of if you're going to be a senior resident who is planning on trying out bedside rounds. It actually has been also very frequently been shown to have increased and improved patient satisfaction. So despite that there are some situations where things may be a little bit more uncomfortable, like they were mentioning in the Reddit comment, if you go by the evidence, really it does enhance patient satisfaction and they feel like they have more time with the doctors, which they do. And we as doctors also get to have more time with the patients, which is also a, a big part of why we went into medicine, not to spend time behind a computer, but with our actual patient. So this is probably my absolute favorite kind of document on this. Um, this was done at the University of North Carolina, UNC. And this is their attempt of going through bedside rounds and establishing a really good protocol on how to do this. So in this article, they really talk about how they did it. And in their um, pilot of bedside rounding, they actually did a time motion study where they basically had somebody with a, a stopwatch and timed them before the intervention and after the intervention and saw how much time was spent rounding per patient. And if you look here, this is pre-pilot. You can get an exact feel for how much time is spent talking uh, in the patient's room or just talking about the patient before entering the room and then walking around. And this is basically all the time that was spent. And after they started doing bedside rounds, you can see that they actually were able to cut down the amount of time quite significantly. Now, what was really impressive about their implementation of this was that it was really uh, detailed and very structured. And I think that's what helped them have so much success with this. And you can see that their rounds didn't last more than really two hours, which is kind of an ideal time to round. I think anything less than two hours hours uh, is the ideal. You should never really be rounding more than two hours, in my opinion. One of the things that I really liked about their structure is that they made it uh, absolutely uh, essential that the team has a workstation on wheels or a wow while they're rounding, which because a lot of people are saying that they want to be able to put in orders, write notes, call consults during rounds. And that's why people like table rounds. But if you have a good wow that you can use, then uh, you know this has to be an integral part of your bedside rounds in order to make this efficient. And the other thing is that they include 
included this little stool right here, which I thought was a really cool little touch because also evidence has shown that if you sit down with the patient, they also perceive like a higher level of care and increased uh, time with the physician. Uh, and so they would include this stool so that when they're talking with the patient, the person who's presenting would sit down right next to the patient and present the patient, uh, which I thought was a really cute touch. Some other really important things that they did was provide a lot of guidance on what the patient presentation should be like. And uh, essentially, they really kind of cut down on the whole objective per portion of uh, the exam, basically just did like a one liner and then a subjective portion of how the patient was feeling. And then they just went straight into the assessment and plans for everything and anything that was relevant from the objective section. That's when they mentioned it. And they specifically mentioned that the attendings and the senior residents needed to be, you know, reviewing all the labs and all of the objective information before going on rounds, which really they should be doing. And so by cutting out the entire objective portion, you're saving so much time. And it's also making it a lot more engaging for the listeners and for the patients themselves as well. They also had this face sheet thing that they would hand out to the patient. So the patient would know exactly who was, uh, you know, attending rounds with them and who, who everybody standing next to the bedside was. And then they also had a lot of guidance on uh, for the senior resident that they would have the senior resident go look for the nurse for the patient, or at least talk to the charge nurse, letting them know that they were going to be rounding on patients in the in the hallway and so that way the nurse could be present during all the rounds too so uh, honestly this was like a really well implemented implemented bedside rounds but if you take a lot of the uh, key aspects that they implemented I think you could really make bedside rounds a much better experience than a lot of people have had during their medical training thus far and you could really get a really beautiful graph like this that actually shows that you have improved efficiency decreased time rounding per patient but actually spending more time with patients than uh, you were previously another huge thing I think is that you really need to tell patients and set expectations early that when you walk in, we're going to be talking about you. You feel free to jump in to correct us if you have anything, and we can answer a couple questions. But uh, you know, if you have any more questions, you know, we're rounding on other patients, and we'll come back later in the day to answer your questions some more. That way, you don't have those situations where you truly get stuck in the patient's room. You know, we've all had that experience where the attending just basically starts having a conversation with the patient, and everybody's just standing there listening, and there's nothing really useful being done at that time. So you as the senior resident uh, really have to hold the, the attending accountable for getting the whole team out of the room at, in a timely fashion. There are actually also multiple uh, comments from residents in these studies that have stated that not only was their time saved during rounding, but because nurses were more frequently a part of rounds, they had a better understanding of what uh, the plan was going to be for the day. And so this saved a lot of time because there were less pages later in the afternoon, which can eat up a huge portion of your day. And also because the attendings are there with you during rounds, everybody's really on the same page, everybody sees the same thing. And so you don't have those situations where you finish rounds, you start doing some work, then the attending comes back later at like 2 or 3pm after having seen the patient and they like completely change the plan when you're like finishing up most of your work and now you had to like redo a bunch of things. And then also one additional benefit is that learning is a lot more engaging. I think A, as a senior resident, you get a much better idea of how your interns and medical students are interacting with patients. Um, but also interns and medical students will get a better idea uh, and be able to learn more when they see how you and the attending interact with patients. And they're going to get better learning that way as well. And your attending can also do some really great physical diagnosis teaching, things that are lost when you're doing a completely table round focused uh, rounding style. Many times You've, you've kind of had that experience on table rounds. Every single patient just starts to blend in and you get really bored, right? And people start going on their phones. You know, when you're in doing bedside rounds and they're fast and they're efficient, it's actually a lot more fun than when you're doing really prolonged table rounds where you're not even seeing any patients and you're just hearing about patients. So any patient that's not yours, you have literally no interest in hearing about them and it's just really boring. So in general, the efficiency is better, the patient satisfaction and the patient care is better, and the learning is better. Basically, all positives for doing bedside rounding, if you do it correctly. From patient's perspective, bedside case presentations are at least as good as conference room presentations and perhaps preferable. There is some data that's a little bit uh, equivocal, um, hoped to increase their patient satisfaction scores with bedside rounds, but didn't see a better satisfaction uh, scores. But 79% of nurses surveyed did believe the rounds had improved their communication with patients. This recent study in 2021 for uh, neurology rounds 
uh, showed that the mean rounding time per newly admitted patient in the bedside group and hallway group was 23 and 23.2 minutes, respectively, so pretty much the same. And although patients' views of bedside and hallway rounds were similar, patients who had experienced bedside rounds ex- uh, preferred it. In conclusion, bedside rounding was perceived less favorably by most residents, but was as efficient as hallway rounding. Although bedside rounding limited the use of technology for data review, it promoted nursing participation and resulted in more time spent with the patient. Here's a things we do for no reason, which provides a really good argument for why we shouldn't be doing table or card flipping rounds and really cites a lot of the evidence behind why bedside roundings uh, do have a lot of benefits. And it also addresses a lot of the issues of uh, what people bring up with bedside rounds, you know, you know, patient harm in terms of revealing sensitive information or having uncomfortable conversations, efficiency being a reason to avoid bedside rounds, uh, and then not having a safe learning environment because it's a little bit more stressful to be presenting right in front of a patient. But for me personally, I feel like presenting right directly in front of a patient kind of puts some good pressure. You know, a stressful situation or something that puts you mildly out of your comfort zone is actually beneficial for you and for your growth. And so for me, I think it's preferable that it's a little bit more uncomfortable and you have to really perform in in front of the patient because it gives you a little bit more motivation to make sure you're well prepared and do a better job when you're uh, with the patient themselves. And so this article really addresses all of those, brings up all the different research, which kind of addresses those concerns like the efficiency, the patient's uh, privacy concerns, and also, you know, the learning environment. Here in this article, the be- return of bedside rounds, uh, they did an intervention uh, which showed that uh, between the two groups, a duration of rounds was 95 and 98 minutes, respectively. Patients receiving bedside rounds preferred bedside rounds, 99% versus 83%, and perceived more time spent at the bedside by their team. And 73% of house staff reported that bedside rounds were better for patient care. They did feel that bedside rounds were less likely uh, to be educational, however. Here's a really great uh, article that I read uh, basically describing a palliative care doctor's uh, experience with running rounds and then being on the receiving end as a family member when their family member was getting rounded on and basically how it changed their entire uh, outlook on this. I'll put the link down in the description below, but really it was a really great uh, argument for why bedside rounds are so much superior to table rounds or hallway rounds. And finally, this article, uh, returning to the bedside, uh, is basically just kind of some interventions that they made uh, at Wake Forest and found a lot of benefits of returning to bedside patient presentations. Um, You know, for example, this third year student said, I was reminded of why I entered medicine to begin with, to interact with patients and provide comprehensive care. Bedside patient presentations renewed my interest in medicine. And then they gave a lot of guidance on how to really make this a success. And so, you know, things like getting geographical uh, distribution of your patients all in a similar area, getting buy-in from the team, choosing the appropriate patients, being flexible, and then choreography. So, you know, setting really strict time limits for how long you're going to spend in a patient's room. So yeah, I think a lot of this provides some pretty convincing arguments in the favor of doing bedside rounds. And I think it's really something you should highly consider when you become a senior resident. First of all, I would really highly recommend you look at that UNC article because uh, they have quite a few papers published on that pilot program that they did. Honestly, uh, they, they really sell it very well. And for me personally, you know, bedside rounds just does seem more fun if it's done well. And it, it seems more educational, seems better for patients. And it just has so many benefits. And not only that, but most of the research has either shown that it takes the same amount of time as table rounds or is even faster. And if you look directly at the research and not just, you know, the common perception that table rounds is faster, then you truly have really not that many strong arguments for doing table rounds compared to doing bedside rounds. I think the key point is that people need to conduct bedside rounds properly because like I said, all those times that you get stuck in the patient's room and no productive conversation is being had and it's just like a waste of time. We've had a lot of those kind of bedside rounds and your lo- rounds become super long, super prolong- prolonged. And that's the kind of rounds that we want to avoid. That's the reason a lot of people don't like bedside rounds. But I think bedside rounds when done well and done with a structure and a plan in mind, you know, not just haphazardly doing it, but knowing exactly the techniques for making bedside rounds effective uh, really could be a huge thing for you as a senior resident 
resident or even as an attending, it really improve not only the amount of fun that you're having when you're rounding, but also the learning and the patient satisfaction as well. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about bedside rounds. Uh, personally, I find it very interesting. And as a third year resident uh, coming up in a couple months, uh, I'm really excited to really be implementing bedside rounds more frequently. I think as a second year resident, I kind of was a little wishy-washy on it. But I think as a third year resident, I'll have a little bit more autonomy to kind of push it a little more. And I know that it's hugely, hugely unpopular among residents and medical students and everybody in general, like I had just demonstrated with the Reddit comments at the beginning. But I really want to try and prove that uh, bedside rounds being bad is kind of like a mi misconception and that uh, they can be done well. And so that's kind of one of my goals for next year. I uh, really want to hear your guys' experiences and thoughts on this. So let me know down in the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.